those who are joining late, please help them out with the page number, infection control process, page number 14 and page number 51 onwards. So infection control process, there are two main uh, faculties here, standard precautions and transmission-based precautions. Any transmission of infection in any hospitals or healthcare facility can be prevented and controlled through the application of these two categories of precautions. And this should be applied to all patients all the times, okay? Irrespective of whatever is the diagnosis, infectious status, okay? Anything specific to any mode of transmission or not, but all the patients should be handled through these precautions in one or the other way. So standard precautions, it must be applied to all patients all the times, regardless of the diagnosis and infectious status, okay? Just uh, you have to understand that just uh, just have an understanding that any patient could be contagious any patient is infectious so automatically you will use standard precautions to prevent the spread of infection and these are designed to reduce the risk of transmission of microorganisms from both recognized and unrecognized sources of infection in the hospital so even though you do not know what is the source of infection till then standard precautions has to be used after knowing the source of infection, transmission-based precautions are used, okay, uh, like airborne droplet contact, okay, these are the specific mode of transmission. Once you know the source of infection, you can apply the transmission-based precautions. So, these are specific precautions which are required to prevent or interrupt transmission of any pathogen. Pathogen means infection-causing microorganism within the hospital. So, they are specific in nature, okay, they only work for that specific kind of mode of transmission. So standard precautions, consider all patients potentially infectious. Consider everyone who is visiting your hospital as a patient, consider them as potentially infectious. Assume that all blood, all body fluids and tissue are potentially infectious. So never touch any blood, body fluid, spill tissue without wearing gloves. Okay. Assume all unsterile needles and sharps to be contaminated. Okay. So this is where you, where you have to assume everything pertaining to patient's body, body fluid, blood, syringes unused or used, okay, it is open, okay, then it has to be assumed that it is contaminated. So these work practices are essential to provide high level of protection to the patients as well as to the healthcare workers and visitors when you follow these standard precautions. So these precautions should be implemented when you know, as a healthcare practitioner, you know any of the following is going to happen, okay? When you are going to be in contact with either blood or the patient's body fluid or if you're going to directly touch the wound of the patient, non-intact skin, okay? That is wound or any opening, any rash, okay? If you're going to touch that. Any mucous membrane of the patient's body, if you are going to touch that, okay? Remember to always to use standard precautions so what are standard precautions wash hands five moments of hand washing before and after all patient and and any specimen contact hand washing has to be followed handle all the blood of the patients as potentially infectious even if you are withdrawing blood okay ppe has to be worn wear gloves for protection potential contact with the blood and body fluids Prevent needle stick or sharp injuries as much as possible. So, so handle needles, needles with care. Don't break them. Don't recap them. Wear personal protective equipment while handling blood and body fluids. Handle all linen soiled with blood and other body secretions as potentially infectious. Process all laboratory specimens as potentially infectious. Okay, anything that comes to the laboratory as specimen form should not be touched with bare hands. Wear a mask for TB and other contagious respiratory infections. Any respiratory infection, if you are sure that patient is coughing, sputum is being produced, you have to wear a mask while dealing with the patient. Correctly process instruments and patient care equipment. Maintain environmental cleanliness and manage spills as per prot protocol. 
every spills have their own formula and protocol how to manage it in the textbook they have given in in tables and all you can uh, read the spill spillage chapter follow proper waste disposal practices biomedical waste management so in summary of standard precautions perform hand hygiene before and after every patient contact clean and reprocess any shared patient equipment okay like stethoscope and all if you have used it on one patient before using it on another patient just wipe the stethoscope which is going to touch the patient's body that area with the 70 percent alcohol spirit use personal protective equipment when risk of body fluid exposure is anticipated wear mask eye shield okay gloves apron follow respiratory and cuff etiquette hygiene always cl close your nose and mouth while you're sneezing standard precaution summary use and dispose of sharps safely safe disposal of sharps in a puncture proof leakage proof container use antiseptic technique always okay in any clinical procedure perform routine environmental cleaning handle and dispose of the waste and use linen safely coming to the transmission based precautions page number 51 onwards routes of transmission you have contact transmission airborne transmission droplet transmission so contact direct or indirect contact by touch okay or even by touching the articles another infected patient has used okay through that also infection can spread droplet transmission sneeze cough okay body fluids that are heavier in nature which stays around the patient close by to the patient that are, that is droplet transmission airborne transmission again sneeze and cough but it can be the these droplets can be pushed way further with the air currents because the infective organism pathogen here is very light in weight okay so it will stay in the room or it can be passed into the other room as well through air currents so contact transmission infection by direct or indirect contact occurs through direct contact between the source of infection and the recipient of infection or indirectly through contaminated objects as well okay so this is two situation you can see an infected person a when they touch directly go and touch another person who is uninfected direct contact handshake is also enough to make the other person sick okay the second way is an infected patient a person when they are using any articles that are used by others as well okay the same articles without cleaning or without proper reprocessing if it is used by somebody else they also get infection so how do you manage the patients with contact transmission so place the patient in examination room to do the physical examination to check the rectify the signs and symptoms perform hand hygiene before and after touching the patient wear gloves after hand washing wear gloves uh, examine the patient after examination dispose of the gloves wash hands again okay use personal protective equipments like gloves and gown while you are dealing with direct contact transmission clean and disinfect the examination room accordingly okay and once the disinfection is done then you invite other patients into the room okay separate bathroom for the patients who are who have diarrhea cholera okay suspected with cholera diarrhea like um, uh, infectious conditions in that case separate bathroom has to be given to the patients who are infectious single room is preferred but given the stage uh, the stature of indian hospitals public health hospitals it's better to cohort the patients all the patients who are suffering from the same kind of infection are put in the same ward limit the movement and transport of the patient as much as possible the more the patient is free to move around into the in the hospital they will touch a lot of door knobs or any other articulate uh, 
objects nearby, okay, environment nearby, which anyone can touch, any visitor can touch and they can get infected. Thus, the infection will spread, okay. So, limit the movement and transport of the patients. Dedicated patient care equipments for, uh, for the pa patients who are infected. Uh, do not use the stethoscope, BP machine, uh, uh, the uh, thermometer, okay, uh, pulse oximetry. Okay. These, if you are using for an infected patient, don't use it for any other patient. Keep, uh, keep these equipments dedicated for this particular single patient who is infected. Okay, don't share these devices with any other patient. So is it clear about uh, contact transmission? What all management strategies you have to implement? Next is infection by airborne transmission. So it occurs by respiratory route. Okay. For any agent which is present in the aerosols, aerosols means when you cough and you sneeze, okay, you uh, push out aerosols out of your nostrils and your mouth while you're coughing and sneezing. So these aerosols have nuclei of the infectious pathogen, okay? And it is very light. It is very uh, small in size, less than 5 micrometer in diameter. It is that small, okay? So the aerosols will get evaporated, but the nuclei will stay as dust particle, okay? Containing the microorganism, it will stay in the atmosphere, okay? It will remain suspended in the atmosphere long, for a long period of time and it can move from one room to another room as well. If a fan is on, air currents are going on, these uh, infectious pathogens or uh, microorganisms along with the dust, it can move from one room to another room. Okay, And it can be dispersed widely by air currents and it can spread at a very uh, larger in, uh, intensity. Okay. It can travel longer distance. So tuberculosis, measles, chicken pox, okay, herpes zoster, coronavirus, okay, they all come under swine flu, they all come under airborne transmission. Okay. So you can see here when the droplets are heavy, when the droplets particles are heavy, bigger than 10 micrometer in size, they cannot be remain suspended in the air. They fall down, okay? They fall down very close to the patient. This is droplet. But airborne, you can see the droplet sizes are so light, okay, less than 5 micrometer in diameter. They are so lightweight. And even if the aerosols are getting evaporated, but these lightweight pathogens will stick to the dust particles in the atmosphere and it can travel Farther, further distance and it can get anyone infected, okay? Hundreds of meters away from the patient, it can get dispersed. So management of patient who has an airborne transmission, respiratory protection has to be given. N95 mask, N97 mask can be used. It is ideal to use these kind of mask for pulmonary tuberculosis, Specifically, surgical mask can be used if a patient is suffering from meningococcal meningitis. If it is a non-immune or pregnant staff, okay, do not allow them to work in the uh, ward where airborne transmission patients are admitted. Non-immune staff whose immunity is low and pregnant staff should not be posted here. Persons immune with varicella and uh, rubella, ones who have any staff who have got chickenpox, okay?
anyone who has the history of chicken pox, they don't have to wear surgical mask or they don't have to wear the mask because they already have the immunity against it. Varicella and rubella, if anyone has been infected by these infections in their childhood or any time in their life, they already have the immunity to fight against it. So they don't require mask. Gloves, uh, gown, goggles has to be uh, worn. If spraying of the respiratory fluid is anticipated, if you are giving suction, okay, or if the patient is sneezing a lot, you're going in that area, you, you are expecting a lot of sneeze and cough, wear all this and go through that area. Hand hygiene, do not forget. Instruct the patients to wear masks when they're exiting the exam room and they, they teach them respiratory and cuff etiquette. Always close the mouth while sneezing and all. Sneeze into your elbows if you don't have a piece of cloth or tissue. Clean and disinfect the examination room soon after the patient leaves. Keep it vacant for one hour. Okay, Within that uh, one hour, disinfection has to be done and then another patient can be invited for examination. Separate entrance to the facility, specifically if it is a TB cases, you are handling. TB patients have a separate entrance for, to the facility. They can, uh, You can accommodate them in airborne infection control isolation room, negative pressure room. Okay, uh, Transfer the patients to facilities which can manage such cases like isolation hospitals. Now we do, now we do have isolation hospitals as well. Okay, Tuber, uh, uh, regional tuber TB care center is available. Isolation hospitals came up after COVID-19. Okay, so uh, these airborne transmission cases can be handled well in these specific facilities. Okay, if you do not have the resources to manage them. Negative pressure rooms is a must to keep the airborne infectious patients. Self-closing doors. Okay, as soon as somebody leaves the room, doors should close automatically. Because if you open the door, uh, no knobs and all, okay, the, you can spread the infection also. Ventilation and exhaust fans because it uh, it will make the room in negative pressure. Doors and windows of this isolation room will always remain closed and limit the movement and transport of patients as well. Okay, any infectious patients, you have to limit their movement and transport. Next, infection by droplet transmission occurs through droplets uh, that are larger than 5 micrometer in size. So, droplets generated from the infected patients, it, can, it is propelled to a short distance through air. Okay, and because of its weight, it will fall down. It cannot remain suspended in the air. So, it applies to patients who have vi viral infections like influenza, adenovirus, pneumovirus, Botrytella pertussis is also a droplet infection, Neisseria uh, meningitis, streptococcal infections. So again, you can see here how droplet infection is different from airborne infection. Droplets are heavier, closer to the pa patient. Okay, at least twenty feet closer to the patient in the circumference. Uh, it is uh, when if you are if you are approaching if, as a nurse or a healthcare practitioner. If you're approaching the patient, if you're going to take care of the patient within this distance, you have to wear a mask, okay? But if you are going to be far away from the patient, you don't have to wear mask, okay, in case of droplet infection. So prioritize the patients with excessive cough and sputum production, even when it's a, it's a common entrance, but you notice there is a patient who is coughing a lot. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, sputum production is also seen. Just give me one moment.
Am I audible to all? So, yeah, even if you see any patient who is entering from the main entrance, but you notice them, they have a lot of sputum production, they are coughing excessively, reach out to them, separate them from the crowd, okay, take them through another entrance in an open area, in a very open area, you have to give them the sputum cup to do the sputum collection, okay, guide them. They have to cuff out in an open area and then collect the sputum and give it back to the laboratory. Okay. So like this, you have to keep an eye out for patients in queues and all. Keep an eye out for patients who are producing excess sputum, who are coughing a lot. Okay. Provide them face mask. Separate these patients from other patients in waiting area. Okay. Wear, uh, you yourself also have to wear the gloves, gowns, goggles if you know. Spraying is anticipated, respiratory fluids and spraying of respiratory fluids is anticipated. And perform hand hygiene always, okay, before and after caring for the patients. Instruct the patient to wear mask while exiting the examination room. Practice um, respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette. The same thing how we will do with airborne cases. Same you have to apply for droplet as well, okay. Disinfect the and clean the examination room as soon as the patient leaves. Without disinfecting the examination room, don't let other patients in. Or you can keep all the infected cases, all the respiratory infection cases, you can keep at the last of your consultation. Uh, first consult all the non-infectious cases. Okay. All the infectious cases you can keep uh, as a last consultation. Or you should have a separate examination room to consult the respiratory cases. Single room, again, it is preferable. If not available, cohort the patient. All droplet transmission patients can be kept in one room. Wear mask when working within the within three feet of the patient. Okay, Beyond three feet, no need to wear mask or any PP. But if you are coming very close to the patient, within three feet of the patient, if you are going to work, give care, patient care, general patient care and all, you have to protect yourself. Spacing between the bed, at least one to two meters uh, space should be there. Again, limit the patient movement and transport. Dedicated use of patient care equipment to a single patient. Don't use this single patient's equipment. Uh, the patient who has droplet infection, don't use their uh, patient care equipment, general patient care equipment for other patients. So that's about the 